Blessings in Jesus' name. So I'm going to be reading from the book of Mark, the Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Talking about John the Baptist. John did baptise in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptised of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins and he did eat locusts and wild honey. And preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptised you with water, but he shall baptise you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him upon Jesus and there came a voice from heaven saying thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness and he was there in the wilderness forty days tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. So now after that, John was put in prison, prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little farther thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants, and went after him. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. So the, even the demons, even those vile wretches, those foul spirits, identified who Jesus was. And were asking, knowing that he would eventually destroy them and torment them, if the time had come early, as though God would abandon his word. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. So they were wondering, who is this man? He's, he's commanding these demons out of people, these powerful cosmic entities out of people. Well, who is he? What authority has he got? Even that of, of God. So again it says, and they were all amazed after the demon came out and Jesus commanded him to come out and he came out. And they were all amazed 
excuse me, in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand, and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. At, and at even, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. Alleluia. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away. And he said unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, shew thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out, and he began to publish it much, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places, and they came to him from every quarter. Chapter 2 And again he entered into the Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about, as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. And they, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy were, or lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, and reasoning in their hearts. Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he says to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he, he arose, took up the bed, and went forward, before them all, 
insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion, or like this before. And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi the son of Alphaeus sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house at dinner, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciple, to his student, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? Why is he eating with these people who are behaving in low conduct? When Jesus heard it, he said, saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And the disciple of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst bottles and the wine is spilled and the bottles will be marred but new wine must be put into new bottles and it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the sabbath day and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn and the pharisee said unto him Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? Like working on the Sabbath. And he said unto them, Have ye never read what David did when he had need and was hungered, he and they that were with him? How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest and did eat the shewbread, which is not lawful to eat but for the priests. And gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he said unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he said unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him and from Judea, and from Jerusalem and from Idumea, 
and from beyond the Jordan, and they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. And he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him and rush upon him and overwhelm. For he had healed many in so much that they pressed upon him for to touch him, as many as had plagues. So all the sick people were looking for Jesus because they heard that he had healed many. All or most. And unclean spirits, it says here as many as that place, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. And he goeth up into a mountain and called unto him whom he would and they came unto him. You see, God has foreknowledge of how Satan will react. And, you know, if the devil gets heads up in enough time, he can make a mess. If the devil gets enough heads up, he can start putting things in motion. Because he's a king, but he's a quick king. He's a spirit. So he can get things done like that messages can go around with demonic speed <clears throat> so Jesus in all his foreknowledge and uh, perfect wisdom knew when to charge people not to make him known don't make me known yet as the son of God don't you know don't don't uh, start shouting that from the rooftops just yet. And he spake to his disciples that a man, a small ship should wait on him. Sorry, I just want to make sure that. Oh yeah, sorry, I read that. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. And he goeth up into, a, you know, straightly like, uh, clearly, concisely, like no mess and straight to the point, like don't make me known. And he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. And Simon he surnamed Peter, and James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, and he surnamed them Bon. Herges. I, I don't know how to pronounce that one. It's B O A N E or G E S because it's they have lots of accents over the letters, so I, I wouldn't know. Which is the sons of thunder, is what it means. And Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus and Simon the Canaanite. And Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him. And they went into an house. And the multitude cometh together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself. Now, it was almost like the people, the nations, were hearing tell of Jesus and who he was by feet, by deed, by action before he wanted it published that he was the son of God and you have to understand that Jesus came also to expose the corruption within the powers that were claiming the lineage of Abraham and using it as a mallet to beat the peoples over the head with so Jesus was going to disrupt their power structure seriously. And they would kill him for it. But those, because all they have is to cling to their powers. Um, sure, they rejected the Lord himself. So they would defend their powers as though it was the only thing they had. Even unto killing.
killing the source of life. Like the Bible says that they killed the source of life. So, I mean, if, if a Muslim can't or doesn't think the Bible says that Jesus is God from that, do they think that a prophet is the source of life? The Bible says they killed the source of life. They'll say, God cannot die. Correct, Jesus rose from the dead. But he died. But God can't die. But Jesus the man did. But God is not a man. No, they're right, God is not a man. And God cannot die, they're right. But Jesus died. And he was a man. But Jesus is also God. They can't wrap their head around it. They can't or they won't. Because what will it do? Disrupt their power structures. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub. <clears throat> So they were saying, this man is casting demons out of men by the power of Beelzebub who rules them. But Jesus said, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Satan is not casting demons out of men. When a demon leaves a man, it goes and looks for seven of its buddies to come back and wreck the joint as well. are always trying to populate men these foul spirits and the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said he hath Beelzebub and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils and he called them unto him and said unto them in parables how can Satan cast out Satan and if a kingdom be divided against itself that kingdom cannot stand and if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man. And then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies, wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. In terms of Jesus was talking about himself there. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness. So he was warning them. He was giving them a sharp warning there. Be very careful. Do not willingly misrepresent the Holy Spirit of God. So now they had the lesson and he was giving them the warning that went with it. But is in danger of eternal damnation because they said he hath an unclean spirit, you see. So they were saying he had an unclean spirit which was misrepresenting the Holy Spirit that was in him. So he warned them sharply. There came then his brethren and his mother and standing without sent, sent unto him calling him. And the multitude sat about him and they said unto him Behold thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them saying Sorry, I'm... I'm didn't get the inflection right there and the multitude sat about him and they said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee like they're outside looking for you and he answered them saying who is my mother or my brethren and he looked round about on them which sat about him and said behold my mother and my brethren for whosoever shall do the will of God the same is my brother and my sister and my mother 
they're my relatives, they're my family, they're doing the will of God. So they are truly my relatives. And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, <coughs> and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. That seeing they may see, and not perceive, and hearing they may hear, and not understand, lest at any time they should be convert, converted, and their sins be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then, how then will ye know all parables? So or soweth the word, and they and these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receiveth it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure, but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel, or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid, which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear, with what measure ye meet. It shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given, and he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the, the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because he harvest his, because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up, and becometh greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them, as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. And the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. 
And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and saith unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Okay, So that's up to chapter 5, which I will recommence a little later. So that's St. Mark, the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, chapter 5. I'll continue from there. Thanks for watching. Like and share.